Hello and welcome to the 3D Printer DIY Ideas series. This time around I want to talk about the heat block I teased in the previous video. Before I get into the details, let me give you a little backstory. About two months ago, I stripped a thread in my heat block. Ever since, there was a filament leaking on top of it. How did this happen? To this day, I am still not sure. Perhaps it was because I changed the nozzle like 30 times? Or perhaps I was trying to tighten it at 280 degrees? Or maybe because it was the material that heat block was made of was just a garbage? Or maybe all of these things played a role. So, obviously I had to replace it. Thankfully I did have two spares. The only problem was that the thermistor was basically permanently stuck inside of an old heat block. I managed to find another thermistor and got my printer working. Because I do change nozzles quite often, it wasn't long before the same thing happened again. I began to wonder, is it even worth putting the third spare? Maybe I should find something better. Perhaps a heat block made out of copper? It was also back then when I asked myself a question. Maybe I should try making my own heat block? How hard can it be? People were making heat blocks before they were readily available off the shelf, so it should be possible, right? And judging from a quick glance at my heat block, it's basically just a piece of metal with three holes, and one of them has M6 thread. There isn't anything special about it. So I did a little research and saw that the copper isn't really that expensive. Closest material that matches the size of a volcano heat block would be 20x 10mm flat bar. Unfortunately, I could not find a shop that can sell me only a small piece and I wasn't really interested in buying an entire meter. Next best thing was just a copper rod with a diameter of 20mm. And this time it was a jackpot. I bought myself a copper rod made of 99.99 .99 pure copper with a length of 100mm for around $10. Unfortunately I did not record myself doing it, however I do have some photos which I can show. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal since the entire process could be done in about 5 minutes or so. All you need is a drill. 3 and 5 mm drill bits and the M6 tap. I don't even have a press drill so I did every hole just holding a drill with a hand while the block was inside the vise. To cut flat bar or rod to the size you will need a hand saw, jigsaw or even an angle grinder. A 3D volcano is roughly 20 mm high. You're probably asking yourself a question right now. But how are you going to secure the heat cartridge and thermistor inside of it? Well, the short answer is, I won't. Since it's a volcano block, the thermistor and cartridge are coming from the top. And because they are really tight, I sincerely doubt they are coming off anytime soon, even without any screws. My version had a glass bed thermistor, so I had to use some kind of screw on the top of it because my two thermistors died alongside the heat blocks. However, I advise against it. Just get yourself a cartridge thermistor, it's much easier to fit as it only requires a simple 3mm hole. When I was done with it, I simply mounted it to a printer, heated the hot end up to 300 degrees and tightened up the nozzle like I usually do. No leaks this time, so it was a mission success. I did not want to prematurely release this video, since I wanted to test it before I do a guide. So I have waited around 3 weeks and I already have quite a lot of print time on it. I believe I printed around 2 kilograms of PLA and a little bit of PET G with it. Mind you that the copper volcano heat block is at least $9, so the DIY version is roughly 3 times cheaper. And yes, I know it's not nickel plated, but it does work. 
and I don't think there will be any issues with the corrosion. I guess we will have to see in a couple months. Next step, I wanted to actually measure if it's good. Because it's completely pointless to make a custom heat block if it cannot match a standard volcano that you can buy off the shelf. So I use an online app to generate a flow test for me. The same that CNC Kitchen does in his videos. I will link it in the description below. I also had to buy more precise scale because blobs were too tiny for my kitchen scale. So if you want to do a similar test, keep that in mind. But thanks to it, I'm proud to announce this entire project was really successful. After taking measurements, it turned out to be capped around 30 cubic millimeters per second. Would I recommend doing it? Absolutely. If you are printing a lot of materials at high temperatures, you may run into the same issues with aluminum heat blocks as I did. Even if the one I have right now fails, I can just make an, myself another one in 5 minutes. I hope that this time I will manage to salvage both thermistor and heater cartridge. I will also include some CAD files of my design in the description. However, it doesn't really matter how well you drill your holes as long as they don't interfere with each other. Of course, this wasn't the only reason I bought myself a copper rod. I also want to test some of the designs I have in mind when it comes to heat blocks. But it will have to wait a bit before I get my CNC fully working. This will be it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you do, hit that subscribe button as it will help me get motivated to do more custom stuff in the future.